want to take a moment to do a deep dive into the B9 Create 2.0 software. Eric sat down and actually recorded a demo of it so you could get a look at the highlighted features as well as what it can do for your 3D printing technology. All right, I'm going to show you a few features inside our new B9 Create 2.0 software using FAST technology. Uh, this technology enables up to 25 micron resolution on our new XL printers. Uh, first thing I'm going to do here is import a file. We have a new importing screen here. Done. All right. Let's take a closer look. <clears throat> first thing you'll notice is that there's these um, areas that are highlighted in yellow. That yellow is actually what we call the auto support auto support area or highlighter uh, rather. This can be tuned via the menu on the right. Um, what we're doing here is giving a visual indication of uh, where supports would need to be placed based on the uh, angle from the build table. So um, given this model here, I think I would probably put it at 45 degrees. Um, I'm also going to do a quick uh, translation in the Z direction because I want this to print up higher off of the build table. All right, and I wanted to show you, if I enter my support mode here, I wanted to show you a new feature that we have called support mirroring. So um, I'm going to support this as I normally would by adding a few supports to the center here. What we'll do for, for purposes of our demo. Uh, so with the mirroring turned on, what I can actually do is add my supports just on one side and I will get a completely symmetrical support on the other side. This works for interior parts as well. So this cuts down uh, for your symmetrical parts like rings even more into the industrial pieces. This is really going to cut down your um, the amount of time you spend uh, manually supporting parts uh, by half, which is pretty cool. All right. Um, another thing I can show you here, we have uh, new sectioning tools off to the side. Um, these, these allow you to get kind of uh, up close and personal with your parts. Say you had maybe um, it was a little difficult for you to see what was going on on the inside of this part. You, you can just hide half the part uh, and go ahead and, and add these supports. And once I bring this sectioning back out, your, your uh, supports have been added there. All right. Uh, we do still have the ability to um, edit supports. You can grab bases and slide them around. I mentioned earlier that you can put um, supports in the highlight zone. You can also grab those tips and move them outside of the highlight zone if you so choose to do that. The, the highlighter is there just for you to use as a guideline. Um, for, you know, mathematically speaking, this area is more likely to need a support. Uh, another thing I can show you here real fast is uh, our duplication. So let's say I've got this part to where I, where I like it. I want to produce five of them. Uh, all I need to do is hit that duplicate button and I'm going to get an exact copy. And I can do that again and again until I am, have reached the number of parts that I want. Um, kind of going to transition here a little bit and show you a few other features. Let me import uh, a little bit larger part, a little bit more industrial piece here. So just like before, we have the yellow highlight area. Um, for this part, I'm actually going to tune that back just a little bit. I can get rid of um, some of the, I know right here based on this angle, uh, that the material that I want to print this in, which by the way is our rugged material, uh, I will be able to get away with having no supports down here just fine. So. I'm going to dial that back just a little bit, 35 degrees-ish should work. 
Um, as I go to add supports here, uh, I'm going to do. I'm going to show you some of our new um, auto supporting. So, um, what I'm going to do is actually create my own custom auto support. I've already got a uh, a name here, but I can actually save this out and use it again on future parts like this. Uh, I have a few options um, to tune what I like here. Uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and auto support the part and that's going to give me kind of a preview of um, you know what my options here on the right are giving me. Bear with me just a second while that loads. There we go. Alright, so what I've actually used here, and I'll go to the bottom view so you can kind of see um, these parts are laid out very symmetrically. I've used our new um, grid supports to achieve this. Um, they give the bottom of your part, if you have a big flat area that needs support like this part has, they give the bottom of your part a really nice um, finish. You'll still have some support scars uh, from where the supports were, but you're going to be uh, a lot more, you're going to have a lot more fidelity to your original file um, and it's going to feel a lot more uniform rather than if I had to come in here and manually place each one of these um, you would kind of wind up with a very variable result. And the nice thing is with our new template um, I'll be able to just save this and duplicate it later. So there. Um, next thing I can show you is um, The, the new slicing. So if I've got my part all supported here, I can go ahead and save that out. Uh, our new slicing, uh, you may have, have seen our, our previous generation in, in Create 1.0, which we've now started calling it uh, retrospectively. You may have seen our surface finish option. Um, it created a very nice surface finish, but um, the unfortunate downside of that technology was an increased slice time. Um, now with FAST, you actually have the uh, benefits of FAST slicing and the benefits of the surface finish and dimensional accuracy all piled up in one. So um, our, new <laughs> our new slicing is actually showing you layer by layer. Um, how the part is going to be built. I actually find this kind of useful um, as a way to visualize my part being made. You can see we're already 23% here. With a part that uh, takes up the entire build area like this and as many supports as we have here, um, using our old surface finish technology, this slicing would probably take uh, hours, somewhere in that range. Um, and we're going to be done here in, in just a matter of minutes, which is pretty cool. Uh, while this is going on, I'm going to go ahead and mention too, we talked about the, the auto support and how you could save out your, your kind of scheme for auto supporting. Um, you can actually save out more than that in our new software. You'll have the ability to um, create part templates, um, which, which will save um, your auto supports as well. It'll save your auto supporting angle. Uh, it'll save your rotations, like uh, if your part needed to come in, you know, turned, or if you needed to raise everything up in the Z. Uh, it'll save those for you as well, so that all you have to do um, on a new file import is actually select your your part template, and it'll it'll orient the part for you in space and then hit auto support, it'll auto support the part for you and you'll be able to go directly to slicing in a matter of minutes if you're producing a bunch of parts that are very close, um, you, you know, geometry wise to each other. Uh, okay, so we're done slicing here, that took only a few minutes. Um, the next thing I'm going to show you here is the ability to um, add, the, add the part to your printer. I've already got a printer selected, I can choose from any in this list as long as they are um, the correct printer type that I have sliced for. Um, all I need to do to add this project is click the little blue button once I've selected my library here. 
So that um, that's going real quick. I'm going to show you um, a few more features um, inside the software here just as soon as this is done loading. Bear with me just a second here. Here's, as that's finalizing, here's one more thing I can talk to you about. Um, our old software actually had this feature too, and we carried it over into this new software. Um, the print queue actually uh, gives you the ability to line up um, prints in the order that you want them to be printed so that you can have a printer manager actually managing, um, you know, at, at what at a high level, what project needs to be done first. Um, and in what order things need to be done. And then out on the printer, you can have a completely separate person, maybe a manufacturing person, some sort of printer operator, full-time printer operator, just running through that list in the order that it needs to be done in. Um, and and that, that's really convenient for them. They don't have to select their uh, materials. They don't have to select the, the file that needs to be printed. They don't have to select the slice thickness. That's already been pre-chosen. Uh, and all they have to do is um, hit go and pull the print out when it's done. All right, so once I've got my file uploaded here, um, I'm essentially done. I, need, I just need to go press start on the printer. Um, so what I'm gonna show you next, I'm actually going to um, clear the slices, which I've done off camera here. I'm gonna open up the printer and I'm gonna show you some of the printer uh, dashboard features that we've included. This is going to be really nice for um, uh, managers, for uh, business owners. It's going to be a nice way to kind of track some of the uh, work you've been doing. So inside each of the printers here, we actually have um, uh, the history of the prints. Uh, we have traceability through um, what firmware was the print printed using, what materials uh, what material setting was used to print those, at what quality level were they done, um, average speed of the print, uh, total layers, things like that, um, slice type. This, this is going to be really nice um, to kind of keep track of what you're doing day to day. We also have the ability to export those as a CSV format. So you'll be able to take all of this data, import it into Excel, and do all sorts of number crunching um, a lot easier than you were able to do it before. That would have been a very manual process before. So that's something that we're kind of um, pretty proud of. Um, next up, I want to just let you know, make you aware that this is here. Uh, we have a new workflow mode. All right, to show you the workflow mode real quick, I'm going to start a new project. All right, change over workflow mode. All right, workflow mode is intended for new users. Maybe you're new to 3D printing, uh, new to the layout part of 3D printing. Uh, what we're trying to do with this is um, instilling you the right uh, methodologies for, for laying out your part. So um, I'm going to grab the ring we used earlier. Import that. Okay, and uh, what workflow mode is going to do is just kind of restrict you to certain steps of the process at a certain point in time. So the first thing, step number one, is obviously um, import your part, right? So if I hit next step. I'm going to um, get to the, the point where I need to orient my part. So in this case, I would bring it up in the Z direction. Um, next, I would support my part. Um, I can use a custom support configuration that I've used previously, um, or I can go in and manually add my supports, uh, kind of the old way. Uh, once I'm done with that, I slice my print. Those are kind of the the, uh, the order that we want you to go through um, in order to be successful in your printing. Uh, also wanted to mention that we have some new uh, help menus. 
that will actually include videos and some really good um, text. If you ever do get stuck, um, those will be throughout the software as well. Um, thank you for hanging in there with me on this. Uh, if you need any more info, uh, go to b9c.com slash new.